Hello, it's Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. We're in lesson four in unit one. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about polynomial functions and rates of change. We already looked at exploring behavior for increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. But with a polynomial, we want to be a little more specific and identify those intervals where the function is changing in a certain way. If you look in the definition of a polynomial function, you can see here in the vocabulary section that we have degree n, that's the highest degree term of the leading coefficient, and we have degree zero, that's the constant term at the end when a polynomial is put in standard form. And we arrange standard form by the degree in descending numerical order. A turning point is a point where the graph of a function changes direction from up or down, upwards to downwards, or from downwards to upwards. The maximum number of turning points a polynomial can have would be the highest degree minus one. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's say you have a quadratic function, that's a parabola. The parabola has highest degree two, so the parabola would have one turning point, either at a maximum or a minimum. So if we expand that thinking a little further, we can see how that formula will work for polynomials of any power. Here in example one, we want to practice just the basics. So in example A, the leading coefficient is the constant term, the constant number in front of the highest agreed term. So negative five would be our leading coefficient. In the highest agreed term is x to the fourth power. This is a fourth degree polynomial. And if there are n minus one turning points, then the turning points would be four minus one or three. And you can go through example B and example C and locate the highest agreed term so the leading coefficient, the degree, and the turning points are right there for you to see. In part C, you've got to think about this a little bit. So to get the leading coefficient, we would multiply x times x squared times 10x. So x times x squared times 10x is going to give us a leading term as 10x to the two, three, four power. So leading coefficient, 10, degree four, and turning points, three. Then finally, one more vocabulary in a graphic manner. If we have a function f, there's a local maximum at some b value where the y on the b value, the y, is greater than some other x value and that y value is called a local or relative maximum. So we can have a local or relative maximum and here's an example where we have a maximum value here these are maximums. And then a function has a local minimum at some x value, b. If the value for b is less than all the x values in that region, that's going to be known as a relative or local minimum. So let me show you what I mean by this definition up here. If we're somewhere between negative one and positive one, there's an x value. Let's say here's our x value at zero. 
Notice that the y value at negative 1, the f of 0 is 0, and the f of negative 1 is 2. So in this statement here, the f of 0 is less than the f of negative 1 and the f of 0 is less than the f of positive 1. So we can use this definition up here to make it clear visually from our graph how we have a relative minimum value when x is 0. In example 2, we want to shade the interval or intervals of increase in green and the interval or intervals of decrease in red and then state those intervals of increase and decrease. So we're increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, and we're also increasing from positive 2 to infinity. So we want to state that interval from negative infinity to negative 1 and from 2 to infinity, including the endpoint. We're decreasing in between there, so we're decreasing from negative 1 to positive 2 inclusively, and that will shade in red. So red, we're decreasing along here. Label the local extrema as a maximum or a minimum. So we have a maximum here at negative 1, 6, and we have a minimum here at 2, negative 6. What connection can you make between the relative extrema and the intervals of increase and decrease? I would say that the graph changes direction at the extrema. The graph changes direction. And what's the least possible degree of this polynomial? And how do you know? Well, I would say something along the lines of the function has two turning points, so the least possible degree is 3. We could formally call that a cubic function or cubic polynomial. For example 3, in each graph circle the local extrema and draw a dot at each zero. What do you notice about the direction of the zero, or I'm sorry, what do you notice about the location of the zero in relation to the local extrema? So we could circle the extrema. I'm going to put a dot by all of the zeros for each of the graphs. Here are my zeros. And then going back with a different color, we'll put, let's say green, we're gonna circle the local extrema. So there's a minimum here and a maximum here, but this is also a local maximum. Here's a minimum and a maximum. Here's a local minimum, a local maximum, a local minimum. Here's a maximum and a minimum. So what can you say? Do you notice that the extrema can be a zero or it's located between two zeros? And I said it that way. Finally, absolute extrema. We should notice the difference between locating extrema on a graph in a region around an open interval and locating the absolute or global, sometimes called a global extrema, on the graph for the entire domain. In this case, we've got the ordered pair 1, 3. We've got the ordered pair 3, 1, and over here at the bottom we have negative 3, negative 5. 
So in the graph at the right, the absolute maximum is the f of 1. The maximum is 3. Notice that when they ask us about the maximum, it's a y value. The f of 1 is 3. We, it's not the ordered pair. It's the y value. And the absolute minimum is found at x equals negative 3. And that absolute minimum value is negative 5. At the top of the next page, here's our formal definition for relative or local extrema and absolute or global extrema. So these are local, these are absolute. Moving on to example four, we want to label and identify the relative and global extrema for each function. So we should be able to do this pretty quickly. The local extrema or the minimum is found at x equals 1.1. That's our local minimum. And our local maximum happens over here at negative 1.8. That's the local extrema. The minimum value is negative 1.8, so the min is the y value, and the max is 3.7, that's the y value. The global absolute extrema, in this case, would be at minimum negative 3.5, this is the location, negative 3.5, Minimum is at negative three and a half, and the maximum is going to be at positive three. The y value is the minimum, so the y value at negative three and a half is negative four, and the y value on our maximum is going to be eight. So our maximum is 8. I'll work example B with you, and then you can do C and D on your own. So we're looking again at the local minimum. So the local minimum is happening right here. That's at x equals negative 1. And what is the minimum? The minimum would be the y value, and the y value is negative 2. And our local maximum would be here at negative 3, and that maximum value would be 0. The global or absolute extrema for example B, the absolute minimum, there is no minimum since the graph is unbounded downward to negative infinity on both sides, and the absolute maximum would be up here. It's close to 2, so we'll say it's about 2. And the maximum value is 8. Okay, turn the video off and try example C and D on your own. So let's see how you did on part C and part D. Can you agree with me for each one of these values? on my answer key. Okay, moving on to even and odd degree polynomials. The big idea here is that a polynomial function with an even degree will either have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. And we can see that in these examples as we go along. In part A and B, I've used my graphing calculator to sketch the fourth degree polynomial for A, and I see a minimum and a maximum and another minimum here. And checking the table or using the, the trace feature, that first minimum is negative 1.623. That's my y value. The second minimum is zero. 
that's this is my second minimum this is my first minimum and this is my first max here so the maximum value is about 2.080 so we do have a global minimum because it's an even degree function we have a absolute lowest minimum here absolute in part b it's a cubic so it's an odd degreed polynomial we have a maximum here and a minimum here and the maximum y value maximum is a y value is 1.089 and the minimum is negative 1.089 i encourage you to turn off the video and give part c and part d a try on your own using your calculator and then checking your work against mine on part c you have an even function so we had an absolute maximum value of 4 and in part d we had an odd function so you have neither an absolute max or min your min value was negative 3.355 and the maximum was y is 5.355 this is our last example for today and we're looking at a table and we are given a polynomial function so we know that the domain of polynomial functions is all real numbers um, assume all the zeros are given in the table so we see a zero at two zero and another zero at six zero so the polynomial has a local minimum at one of the points in the table how would you determine where that low point is well we're here at negative 40 we go up to zero we go up higher at eight we come back down to zero and then we go back up to 16. so it seems to me that the local minimum of the polynomial is going to be at this point six zero six zero because the domain is all real numbers and then where does how do we know that? Well, you can say that in words because it looks like if you follow the table, the function is increasing from 0 over to 4. And then between 4 and 6, it decreases. And then it increases again between 6 and 8. So you could put that in a statement for part A. That's how we know. Something along those lines. In part B, the polynomial has a relative maximum at one of the points in the table. Where does this relative maximum know, and how can you explain what you know? So again, thinking about it, we know that P of X has a relative maximum at the point um, 4, 8. Because it's 0 here, it goes up to 8. That's like a turning point and goes back down to 0. So you can say that in some kind of concise manner. And then we will be finished for this portion of the lesson. And I'm limited in space here. So I said P of X may have a relative max at 4, 8, four, eight because the average rates of change decrease from 2 to 6. That means P of X is concave down. And there has to be at least one input value that corresponds to a relative maximum or minimum between every two real zeros. So 2 is a 0 and 6 is a 0. And then the graph changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 4. So 4, 8 could be a relative maximum of p of x. We just don't know whether something in between 4 and 6. There could be a higher y value than 8 as it's going up and then somewhere it turns and comes down. So this could be the potential maximum there. You just don't know for sure since we don't have a function. And that's the end of day one for lesson four.